Hello everyone, this is your host Professor Reha. Welcome back to the Athena Clash support guide. Uh, I've figured out why I'm such an aggressive um, guardian. It clicked today earlier with some uh, jungling matches I was doing in Conquests with my family. Uh, it, re it occurred to me that I've recently have become, as I mentioned in a comment, a jungle main. I used to be, I was a support main first, and I was support main for the longest time. I was a solo main up until pretty recently, and I've recently transitioned into the jungle, into a jungle main, so I can get my, on my assassins all finished at diamond. Because I have a lot of gods at diamond, but I don't have all of them at diamond. Mostly it's mages, because my family tends to play mages. Um, so I'm kind of working through getting all of my gods to diamond, and I've mostly finished my warriors. Currently, only Horus is not at diamond, and he's five, six? I can't remember what he's at, uh, but I usually play him support anyways, so I've been kind of saving him as a backup in case I wind up with a support role, because frankly, uh, support is the least popular role to play, and the primary reason for that, I'm actually gonna throw out a favor uh, booster here. Uh, the reason for that is because it's not as glorious for a lot of people. It is also considerably more challenging from a specific standpoint of rather than eliminating the enemy which is conceptually very easy to do you're instead trying to keep your allies alive which is conceptually much harder to do it is far harder to save lives than it is to end them so support is conceptually and at least in terms of uh, mindset it is a lot harder to pull off and some people can really swing that mindset, and the people who disagree that support is uh, more difficult conceptually either don't play support regularly, or are the people who already have the mindset and it just comes natural to them, in which case, you are an amazing person. Um, more to the point, I am distracting myself, we are going to have to crack... Oh, that's not a good team comp for us. Okay, I'm going to start with Shell and see what they do. Uh, our team comp is fairly good. I like the soul as an ADC. I think that's a great thing. Gilgamesh going with the Benevolence, which is awesome. Uh, this should be fairly interesting. All right. And we'll just pop this over, over here. We're going to apparently be playing this pretty aggressively, which I can understand because if we don't start slapping down Anubis quick, this is going to get pretty ugly. The fact that they're late to the party also really helps. Alright. Somebody saved my life. Nice. We did get the fire, or the red buff, right? We somehow did not. The enemy Gilgamesh stole it. Fair play to him, then. Fair play. Benevolence also. Yeah, Benevolence is... Uh, well, Animosity is extremely strong on Gilgamesh. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, so what are you doing? I almost got myself killed there. I was fortunately able to keep my presence of mind just enough to uh, recover that. What are we doing here? What are we fighting for here? What are we hoping to accomplish with this? I... I mean, the soul is able to farm in left lane fairly well, which is all right. Now, I actually want to speak about that for a hot second. There is a a somewhat popular belief that the way to play Clash is to have your ADC or mage be in one lane by themselves, just farming. So that way they can carry you. I don't like this strategy, because this basically banks the entirety of your team fights on one individual. And if they get eliminated by, say, an assassin, the usual culprit then your teamfight capability dies with them. So I really don't like that. It does work, but not all the time. It depends on how aware the enemy team is of the strategy and how capable they are at eliminating this individual that your team has spent basically leaving alone for the sake of allowing them to get huge. Okay. I think I can... No, they're not going to come in for me. Okay. I was kind of hoping I could bait some of them. Do I have enough for, uh... No, I need 1750. I don't know why I can never remember that. This is looking very ugly. Okay. Oh, man, that was a good play by him. I goofed. He's been focusing me all the game. Well, all, all the two minutes so far. Uh, and the reason for that is because, again, I am somewhat good against ADCs, so he wants to 
put me down now while he still can fairly effectively. Especially since... Uh-oh. Especially since, um... He's got such strong early game. What do you mean, soul is trolling? How do you, what? What do you mean, soul is trolling? We're gonna actually speed this up a little bit here. I don't need that, I just want to drop it. I'm gonna put out a question mark there and see what kind of response I get on that. I don't know if they know each other and they're just playing around, or if this is an actual accusation and the, the soul's just feeding into it. Oh, it was a genuine accusation. I see. Ouch. Well, he's leveling that up first. That did 100 damage to me. Now that's, um... Okay. Uh, let me see. All right. Bold move. Good play, good play. I've got him in the root. There we go. All right. Uh, activate shell. That was excellent. Good counter ult. That was nice. Excellent. All right, good. That worked out quite well. We, we really came out on top in that fight, which is very important, because we, uh... We're still not that far ahead. I was prepared to taunt that uh, Gilgamesh if I needed to. Turned out to not be necessary. I need to get my Gauntlet of Thieves. I need to start building those stacks. And I need my shoes. Alright. Ah, that was a mistake. I should have uh, realized how little health he had. I just kind of was rushing through it, and that was clearly a mistake. That was clearly a mistake. Yep, I know it. Alright. And I think we can probably kill Aphrodite here. No. Get him. Oh, come on. There you go. I don't know how Naja got, but I really don't care either. Alright. Who's he got? Got Aphrodite. Nice. Bring her in, bring her in. Nice ult. She counter ulted beautifully there. Ouch. Do I have. Okay, we have enough people here. That was a really excellent obelisk by the Honor. The Honor is really, actually, just genuinely skilled with Honor. That was a pure, pure skill move, that block right there. With that obelisk, oh, that was fantastic. Come on. Look at me. Oh, they are determined. Okay, he's out of there, and I'm gonna die for no reason. Fair enough. I should not have stayed that long. When she was dead, I should have just bailed. Should have been out of there ages ago. I... I'm gonna build Pestilence. We're gonna need that. Not Voidstone first. <laughs> not making that mistake again in a long time. Not until I forget about that. <laughs> oh. My goodness. Alright, I'm just gonna ult in on Janus. That was beautifully timed. Alright. I I really don't know why we're fighting here specifically for a mana buff of all things. I gotta abandon the Janus really quick. We have higher targets right here. There we go. There we go. I think Janus wins that. 
Either way, he doesn't need my help. No, nope, he, he bailed on that. Alright, fair enough. Nice. Okay. So, Aphrodite is the only one alive, but that doesn't matter. She's not going to really be able to stop us. I don't know where on her is, which is somewhat concerning. Good enough. My Gauntlet of Thieves is fully stacked, which is pretty awesome. I'm not surprised he made an appearance. It was, he was bound to. There was no way he was just going to let us take that without any kind of struggle. That balances us out quite nicely, so that's really good. That was a nice recovery. Great fight on our side of the field. I don't know who wound up picking the mana buff. I have absolutely no clue. Oh, they are upset. I'm... I should not be here. I should not be here. Alright, we saved the tower, but they they were so upset that we took their tower. That was weird. Just mad rush the tower, honestly? Wow. Alright. I mean, I have enough stats to sustain myself through to the next fight, at least. I'm waiting for an opportunity. I want that on her, but he's being healed up by Aphrodite. I have my ult up, so I can actually get come back. Just after I grab this, I'll take Horrific Emblem. Oh no. Okay, I gotta get out of here. I'm not gonna get out of here. I am dead. Yeah. Good play, good play. I think the main issue was for that team fight is that Soul wasn't there for the beginning of it. Oh, come on, Naja. We still have a good shot of this. I need my cooldowns next. I need my cooldowns next. I don't have time for anything else right now. I need my cooldowns. And then I need to start... Now, that's a fair criticism. I'm, I'm going to leave that one alone, though. I'm not going to get involved in that. But Janus is correct there. The soul is not in position. When a team fight occurs. Well, to, she's right, but the problem here is that she was almost at their tower, and we don't have our tower, so she could have let it go a little bit. So I'm gonna say the first round of criticism towards Soul was unjustified. She had no mana, so she couldn't do anything in that fight. That's understandable. However, that time she absolutely should have been there. Sundering Spear, huh? Alright. Wow, alright. Who's got that to... I don't want to surrender this. Kuzenbo, huh? Interesting. Okay. That's quite the interesting little prospect. But then you're just saving it to use only for the support, which is kind of silly. That was a good kick by Gilgamesh. I mean, it's Janos. It's kind of half his kit. And... Yeah, this is just a uh, uh, really petty argument. <laughs> okay. This this is the I was talking about how difficult it can be for or how difficult supports are to play. This is why if your team does not have cohesion, you are useless. You need your team to do the damage for you and if they're busy arguing, they're not doing anything. I mean, what am I going to do about this? I'm building full tank and while I can survive for a decent amount of time, I still do not have the capacity to kill enemies, and uh, this this is, episode is going to be fantastic. I, we're probably going to lose this episode. I don't really mind. This is a showcase of the kind of thing that you have to deal with sometimes as a support. Just because... If the team doesn't have cohesion, 
you as a support are not going to be able to do anything useful. Because your ability to impact a fight is entirely based around what your team is capable of doing. Yeah? I see what you're trying to pull here. I'm not going to report the soul for trolling, because she's not trolling. She is arguing, but this is not trolling. Alright, that's... Okay, so ignoring the drama, although I do want to actually talk about that as a sort of problem with supporting as a role. But yeah, as you can see, there was not a whole lot of... Uh, I'm going to just commend the Gilgamesh. The only one actually not stopping to type consistently, I threw out a question mark, and at the very end there I threw out a, a sentence, but... The Gilgamesh was the only one that I could really work with, and just the two of us alone are not going to do it. Because once they start it all, um, just... <laughs> Anyways, um, I just had to make sure that they... Soul didn't get policy reported for trolling when they were not. Um, although, the Soul did sell all of their items at the end to go for the items. to hear the counter-argument. Anyways, um, yes, this comes down to the main issue. Now, I could try my darndest to do everything I can to keep people alive, but the instant something like this happens in a game, you as a support are now useless, because even if you keep them alive, they might be too busy typing, or they might not be trying because they're too busy trying to throw the game for someone else, or in this particular case, this, this at the very end, yes, the soul was clearly based on these items, trolling for the sake of it, I remember distinctly looking at the items of soul and seeing really good initial items. There was the, um, the staff there. I can't remember its name off the top of my head. Um, and also there was Rod of Tahuti, which I think was being built a little too early. I think it's too expensive to build in the early game like that. But the soul was definitely trying up until the end there. So, the troll, the soul wasn't trolling initially, but what was I going to do once they started arguing? I mean, they're spending time arguing back and forth, which means they're spending time not fighting, not farming, which is why the soul was level 14. Well, part of the reason why the soul was level 14. And, I mean, if you look at the levels, the comparative levels, Gilgamesh and I were the only... Well, no, I was the only one equivalent with my competition, which in this case was Kuzinbo. You could put that soul was compared comparable to Honor. They were both playing ADC. Soul was three levels down. We have the Mage competition, Jonas versus Anubis. Jonas was two levels down. The argument could be made that Naja is, of course, uh, competing with Aphrodite, which is fair. And then the Naja would be the same level. So the Naja was playing okay for the most part, but still, at the very end, stopped too much to argue with the soul, and so stop becoming functional at that point. Even if they type a little bit and then play a little bit and then stop to type again, that's still time away from farming, fighting, whatever. So this was a doomed match once they started arguing, really. It's very rare that a team that begins arguing like that starts to win. It's very rare. If you have a problem with another player, put in a civil comment, which did not happen in this case, and say, hey, could you try to do such? For example, the main problem with Soul in this match was Soul was never with the team in time for the team fights. Uh, 
Fayardo King clearly believes in the strategy of having the ADC or mage, soul being both in this case, farming up and becoming extremely strong and was willing to ignore whatever was happening on the other lane and was frequently out of position as a result. Now, this is just an assumption on my part. I'm not 100% sure if Fiardo King believes in this, but definitely, undeniably, Soul was out of position almost every time and was late to every fight. Well, not every fight, but most fights. About half, well, we had the two good fights there. We had the fight in the blue. We had the fight towards the middle there. Uh, I would say Soul was late for half the fights, maybe two-thirds of them. Uh, but still, very late to a lot of fights, and that's not what you want out of your ADC. Your ADC should not be late to the fights. So that's the problem there, but we, uh, that was Soul's playstyle issue. The team issue was Janus just immediately accused Soul of trolling, which was not true at that time. I'm still not going to report to Soul for trolling, because that, you, that whole false accusation at the beginning just taints any future accusation. But just to immediately jump to the conclusion that someone is trolling because they're out of position is, first off, extremely bizarre. That is an extreme that is completely unnecessary. The correct response would have been, Hey, Soul, I noticed you were out of position for that first fight. Could you please try to be more aware? Obviously, that would be quite a while um, to type, but something along those lines, something you know, like uh, a shortened version, a more realistic and practical version would be, Hey, Soul, you were out of position. Could you please fight with the team? Or solely relate to that team fight would be a quick type up that you could do. I mean, you could if you're on the death timer, then any of these sentences could work, even the longer ones. Hey, Sol, do you think you could work with the team a little bit? You've got like what, 15 seconds to type that. That's not really a huge problem if you're in practice. Um, if you're in practice typing, but just Yanus immediately would jump to Sol is trolling. No, no, Sol is not trolling. Um, Sol was out of position. Absolutely. Soul was late to the fight. As a result, yes. Trolling? No. Soul was farming. Um, which is fine. Soul lacks awareness, which could be improved, but was not trolling. Not until the end. But once you make that accusation, then that gives a sort of impetus to troll, because the mindset will become, hey, oh, you know, I'm being accused of trolling, so why not troll because they're not going to believe that I'm really trying. And then at that point, the game is gone. It, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Especially as a support who relies, like I said, who relies on your allies to be doing the damage that you are not doing. The, when you... Think of it this way. When you accept the role of a support, you are accepting the responsibility of keeping your allies alive to the best of your ability and handing off your responsibility to inflict damage, or at least significant portions of it. Now, I did kill a few more people than maybe I needed to, absolutely. I should not have had three kills, but then, quite frankly, no one else was getting kills either, except for the Naja. So what... what am I gonna do in that situation? There was just... it was a lose-lose situation. Once Janus jumped to Soul is trolling, match was lost. The match was lost. Now, if the soul had responded with potentially something um, diplomatic and the Janus accepted, I have seen this a couple of times, maybe things could have been patched up to at least the extent that we could win, that we could recover and win. But that never happened. Soul responded with sarcasm, which was fairly neutral. I agreed with it, which was justified. And then the soul was late to another fight later on, and back to the soul is trolling... Um, accusation, which still wasn't true at that time. Still was not true. But that's the point where Soul was like, you know what? If they're going to accuse me of trolling regardless of what I do, why not troll? And then the match is lost. And then the match is lost. So, if you have a problem with how someone is playing, that's fine. You can have problems with how someone is playing. That's normal and understandable. But... If you have a problem with someone's playstyle, don't just say something idiotic like, oh, you're trolling. People playing badly or making a mistake does not automatically mean they're trolling, does not automatically mean they're intentionally feeding. That's not what that means. It could be a mistake. It could be an off day. Maybe they've got something on their mind and they're not 100% focusing on the game. You don't know what they're doing. 
Could they be playing badly? Absolutely. Should you say something? Yes, with some amount of neutrality. At the very least, stick to the pure facts. For example, like I said before, saying to Sol, Hey Sol, you were late to that fight because you were out of position. These are the facts. Everyone on the team could see this. Everyone on, let me rephrase that, everyone on the team with a functioning brain could see this. And, boom. You've addressed the issue, and if the soul rejects your statement, that's not your problem. You, If your team loses, that's entirely on that player for not adapting after you've pointed out an issue with their playstyle. If you say something like, soul, soul, you're trolling. Nope, that's, you just shut the door to potential working with that person in the match, in improving their gameplay, in cooperation, everything. You just completely shut those doors across the way. So even though the soul was not playing fantastically, the soul was playing fairly average, honestly. Uh, was out of position several times, was late to fights, that's fine. But it was the Janus that lost us this game. By just throwing out there, soul is trolling just because soul was late to the first team fight. Janus is the one responsible for this loss because the Janus did not address the actual issue, just jumped the trolling, and did not approach this in anything approaching a diplomatic means. Um, I'm actually, yeah, I won't do that here, but I'll remember this name, Donald Trump. Um, just as a shout out, just keep an eye out for this lunatic. Um, I'm not really going to talk about the um, items in this episode because that's no longer relevant compared to the larger issue of team coordination and how to approach issues within team. Uh, because once the Yanus threw out the Soul's trolling statement and Soul was not able to patch things up in an acceptable way, we had lost. And... Well, the signs, let me rephrase that. The writing was on the wall, but our our, our fate was sealed when Janus threw out that accusation again and Naja agreed with it, and then after that, there was no way. We were not winning at that point. Even though we still had a shot numerically, and statistically, we still had a decent shot at winning, the team coordination was gone. There was just no interest in participating, in helping, in anything like that. And we lost as a result. So, I'm going to use this episode as more of a PSA on both how to communicate with other allies, how to approach issues within team, and how severely damaging such inanity can be to a team composition. Like I said, don't take this to mean, oh, you shouldn't have a problem with how other people play. I have a lot of problems with how other people play. That's not the issue here. Having problems with how other people play is both common and normal. Completely understandable. The issue is how you approach it, how you communicate your issues with their gameplay. And don't don't forget, you may not be right. I, I have this series, this is just my viewpoints on things. I'm not right 100% of the time, I make mistakes. I at least am in practice enough to see most of my mistakes. I probably don't see all of them because personal vision on mistakes is not 2020. Um... And that's just not something I can fix. That's just inherent to human nature. So I'm not going to catch all of my own mistakes, but I can catch at least some of them, and I can address them honestly and openly. And that's kind of the point of this series, is basically uh, I throw out some matches here that exemplify something or present something I want to talk about, either about the god specifically or about some aspect of the game. And you can see this throughout the whole match, and I can offer up both my opinion, my point of view, my errors and my issues with both my own gameplay, other people's gameplay, and builds, and also what I really appreciated. For example, I would like to actually take a brief moment before I end this episode as a shout-out to Foreign Whip. That is some of the best on her gameplay I've seen in a very long time. That was extremely effective on her gameplay. And the on her also had the wherewithal to focus out myself, not because I'm the support, but because I'm specifically Athena, and could pose problems for Onher in the future, especially since Onher has the early game power boost through his passive, which reduces physical protections by, I think, five, uh, 20, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, let me double check that. But the, the awareness and the gameplay on that Onher was absolutely fantastic, and is uh, not a gun. 20, yeah. 
it was absolutely fantastic. But what matters in that match is not the builds. The builds are irrelevant there. The issue was the Yanos. And it wasn't even necessarily that the Yanos had an issue with Soul's gameplay. I had an issue with how Soul was playing. Yanos approached it completely wrong. That's the issue. That's what lost us the game. With that being said, thank you all very much for joining me. I hope this was very educational for you. Um, if you liked this, then please like and subscribe. If not, please ignore me. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, what have you, please leave them down in the comment section below. And have a great 24 hours.